Okay, exciting day today. I'm going for a, uh, a long bumble. Um, I'm flying from Darley Moor Airfield to New Farm, which is Northampton. So it's a uh, 70 mile. Uh, so it's a fairly long trip for me. I'm a bit apprehensive about it, but I've uh, done all my flight planning, done all my uh, fuel planning. So uh, looking forward to it. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, so we're up in the air, we're on our way to New Farm. Very excited. So far the weather is uh, nice. It's, visibility is a little bit hazy, but it's um, hands-off smooth. So, happy with that. Uh, I think I'll turn off the camera, because otherwise it's going to be a really long clip. Uh, I'll turn it off when I get over some of my landmarks, some of my turning points. Um, well, let's crack on, settle down, see you in a bit. Airmanship, I don't know. Uh, my, uh, my track takes me directly over this fairly built up area right in front of me. Now, I don't want to fly over that because um, the rules say I must be able to uh, fly at such a height that I can land clear in the event of an engine failure. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to skirt to the right of this uh, built up area where I've got some fields um, just to stay safe. Not, uh, it's not massively off track, but uh, I just think it's the safer thing to do. Just uh, coming to its own. Uh, it's telling me that there is an aircraft uh, 400 feet below, uh, quite some distance in front of me, but on a reciprocal track, so there's no way I can see it with a naked eye. But the Sky Echo's told me it's there, so I know roughly where to keep a lookout for it. Well, the aircraft, uh, I saw it, it was another flexwing aircraft, um, and it was exactly where Sky Demon, not Sky Demon, my Sky Echo said it would be. Um, we passed each other probably about, I don't know, half a mile apart, and with a vertical separation, there was uh, about 500 feet vertical separation. Saw it in plenty of time. Um, he would have seen me, no doubt. So, Sky Echo, if you've not got one, get one. Is it the Misham VRP? Our visual reference point. Pretty unspectacular, really, it's just a roundabout. Um, although the big factory next to it makes it easy to spot from a long way out. So I guess that's why it's been uh, chosen as a VRP. So somewhere around here, there should be Misham Cottage Farm, which is a, an airfield. Um, that's on my list of places to uh, to visit one day. It's also, I think, about the closest microlight site to, to where I live. So uh, yeah, definitely gonna have to pay that a visit. Onward. Right below, if you can see it, uh, that's Misham Cottage Farm. Yeah, definitely must be. 
quite on a visit. Okay, so something else worth looking at is this is Stoke Golding. I'm just flying overhead, uh, and it looks like there's some model aircraft flying going on. That's another one on my list. Anyway, let's get back going where I'm supposed to be going. Okay, so just going up to the next VRP, which is the uh, Nuneaton VRP. I'm not sure what it is. It looks like a racetrack or a, a testing ground. Uh, it could have been an old airfield at one point, it's got that triangular pattern to the, uh, to the straights. I really ought to do my research, shouldn't I, rather than just guessing it. Anywho, following here is the A5 and uh, it's a Roman road as you can see, it's straight as an arrow. It's interesting, you can see just how straight they are from, uh, from 2,500 feet. There you go. Just crossing over the rude motorway, the M69. It's all got a bit lumpy all of a sudden. I'm hoping this doesn't stay like this all the way to New Farm, otherwise I'm going to be knackered when I get there. Uh, anyway, that's the M6 you can see down below. Okay, so that's the M1 down below. It's still bumpy. Uh, but this is easy, this bit. Just follow the M1. Uh, and then turn left to Northampton. Then you're there. Job done. Cold. Need a wee. Right, so we landed safely at New Farm Airfield. Uh, flight time was one hour and 40 minutes. Um, fuel burn was eight litres. So that um, was pretty much bang on how I'd calculated it. Um, I'm gonna have to get some more fuel while I'm down here so that I've got enough to get back. Uh, it's gonna take me a bit longer to get back so I'm gonna have a bit of a headwind. Uh, and also the weather's supposed to get a bit crappy later on so I'm gonna be leaving um, sooner rather than later but uh, great flight down um, longest flight to date at 70 miles just really shows that these um, bivy bees and pbs um, can really take you places so awesome so i'm just going to sit here talk airplanes and stuff watch the sights have a brew have a burger uh, and then fly back what a fantastic day uh, i'll see you in a bit So that was my trip to New Farm, what a fantastic day. Um, it's a long, long way to go. I've um, 
Certainly stretched my legs. Uh, and now I've got a bit of a long flight of black. It's going to take me uh, two hours to get back, thanks to a slight headwind. Um, I've emptied my bladder before we left, so should be all right. I only had one cup of tea. That was a tactical move. Uh, and hopefully I should be back to Darley Moor before it starts to rain. So, see you in a bit. Right, so, follow the M1 for a bit. Uh, a fairly easy landmark to follow. Northampton looking glorious off to the right. I'm hoping it should be a bit smoother on the way back. We've got total cloud cover now, so uh, there's nothing deep in the ground, so hopefully it might be a bit smoother. It's a bit lumpy on the way here. Um, it's a bit later on in the day now, so hopefully it'll be a bit smoother. Oh, this is fantastic, this is. I can't believe. I still have to pinch myself. It amazes me that somebody's seen fit to give me a license to, to fly an aeroplane. And I know it's, um, it's, it's basic and it's slow and it's at the uh, poor man's end of the spectrum if you like, but it, it still flies and it can still get you from A to B as I've shown today. Gone from uh, the Peak District near enough all the way down to North I'm just coming up to what looks like a race circuit. I don't know what it is because I've not done any research. Um, but what I'll do is I'll find out what it is, and I'll um, I'll put a link uh, or I'll put a uh, I'll put something on the screen to find out what it is. But um, I do always like watching the uh, the motor racing from from. Uh, from this sort of height. I mean, next to uh, next to Darley Moor, there's Darley Moor race circuit. So very often we get to see the, uh, uh, the bird's eye view of the racing, and it does look awesome from up here. So now I've just got to follow the M6 for a bit. This. Uh, it's I think that's what they call IFR flying, is it? I follow roads. I'm starting to get cold. Well, I think uh, we've just about got, the, got to the end of summer. Um, certainly feeling a little bit chilly up here. Definitely gloves weather. I'm going to get myself some heated gloves. I've got a 12 volt um, supply and a charging circuit on my engine, so I might as well use it. Because um, I feel the cold really easy. I'm a bit of a wuss, even though I'm from Manchester and I was brought up in uh, very cold conditions. Definitely going to get some heated gloves. Um, I remember. When I was doing my flying, uh, when I was doing my license, there was one particular flight, and um, my fingers were so sore that uh, it got to the point where I couldn't concentrate on flying. And thankfully, I was uh, I was having a lesson, so I had a, uh, an instructor sat behind me who had to take control uh, just while I sat on my hands to warm them up a bit. So I couldn't concentrate, so I wouldn't want to get in a state like that. Um, when I'm on my own. So heated gloves on the Christmas list. So on the way back, so there's Hinkley. And there's, uh, there's Nuneaton. So over the M69 and uh, squeeze between the two of them. We're getting there, we're getting there. So, uh, I've got a situation with my moto monitor. I've got a moto monitor fitted to my um, my, my uh, aircraft, um, which uh, monitors cylinder head temperature, engine RPM, and then it's also got some basic GPS functions and a um, 
a GPS altimeter. Um, twice now this has happened where uh, the way it works is it's got a, uh, a transmitter which is uh, on the king post behind me um, which has uh, got a sensor uh, that goes to the cylinder head to measure the temperature and also a, a lead that picks up from the HT lead it picks up the um, the, uh, the signal to the spark plug to, to pick up RPM and then that uh, transmits I think it's via Bluetooth to a receiver which is down by my feet and uh, twice now the that link between the transmitter and receiver has been lost um, so I at the moment I haven't got any RPM uh, information or any cylinder head temperature information thankfully I don't really need it and I can fly without it but that's twice now that that's uh, happened and it'd be interested uh, if anybody else not that many people watch these videos because I think I've got uh, very few subscribers but if anybody is watching this that's got a motor monitor that's experienced the same thing I'd be interested to know um, how you fixed it. I know there's different frequencies that this thing can operate on and maybe I might just have to get the manual out and uh, have a look at changing to a different frequency but it happened on the way to New Farm and it's happened on the way back and interestingly both time after a period of about an hour so I don't know uh, I don't know why that is well, well I got to New Farm I landed turned it off uh, left it for a couple of minutes, turned it on again and it was working fine. Um, so curious, curious. But I can live without it, it's not essential. Well, it's just started raining. Got a few spots of rain on my uh, windshield, I've got a few spots of rain on my visor. Um, hopefully it's just the uh, Hopefully it's just spitting. It's spitting. Janice, Barbara, can get the kids. It looks a bit brighter. The direction that I'm going um, looks brighter, so I'm not overly concerned. Um, I was hoping I wouldn't get wet today, but hey ho. Hopefully we'll be alright. My skin's waterproof. A few moments later. Well, now it's proper raining. Definitely raining. This is more than a bit of a bit of mist. This is proper rain. It's a windscreen wipers. Definitely murky. But the way I see it, as long as I can see through the weather ahead uh, to the other side of it, uh, then I'm not uh, I'm not overly worried. I have got plenty of land out options. Um, the route that I've chosen, um, I've got. Uh, there's a number of airfields along the way. Uh, at the moment, I'm just. Well, I can see Stoke Golding. Uh, there's Cottage Farm uh, airfield, um, and then there's other airfields along the way. There's um, there's, uh, there's Fisherwick uh, along the way. So I have got various places. If the weather does get um, too grotty, I have got places I can set down. Consider me options. It's all part of the flight planning. Oh, rainy, rainy, rainy. Right, so I'm just approaching um, East Midlands CTA. Um, so this is where you've got to be careful with your height. I don't want to be um, flying in East Midlands CTA. I don't think I'll be particularly welcome. Um, so, CTA, where I am, is from three, uh, 2,500 feet. So I need to stay below 2,500 feet altitude, uh, and I'm at 1,700. So that gives me a nice 
big margin. Stay safe, stay legal. I do wish it did stop raining though. Still, it's character building, that's what it is. Character building. Confidence building. Keep telling yourself that stuff. So this is this is actually turning into quite a challenge because the weather's not great, the visibility is not great. And as I say, uh, the wind direction is not ideal either. Right, I've made up my mind. Three axis, three axis, it's the future. Yeah, definitely. Okay, sit rep is it stopped raining just it's brightened up i can even see uh, a little bit of blue sky and uh, i can see a darley moor airfield dead ahead so we're nearly there which is good because i need a wee i need a brew and i'm a bit a bit soggy and moist in places I really wish I wasn't. But we've nearly made it, we've nearly made it, come on! What a day! Darling Moor traffic, Golf Charlie Lima Papa Alpha, dead side descending uh, for runway 01 left hand, Darling Moor. Right, so this is going to be a sporty landing because uh, I reckon I've got a uh, 10 mile an hour northeasterly wind into Darling Moor. Uh, so let's see how this goes. I think the secret is to bring in plenty of speed. And we'll see how we go. Okay, so speed is good, centre line, I'm on it, height is good. Keep the bar in, keep a bit of, bit of speed on. Yep, we've got a northeasterly. Watch out for that bloody paramotor, where is he going? Runway made. That'll do. We're down. And even off at Alpha. was the, um, the end of a long and challenging flight but a real confidence builder um, that's 140 miles let me turn this off round trip 140 miles done so that was a real um, confidence builder glad I did that oh, awesome 